In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Chaplain's Report today does come from the book of Samuel. We've been studying through the book of Samuel, and you may recall that in the last session that we had here, what was going on is that Samuel had received the call from the Lord. He thought it was Eli calling him. He comes to Eli's side three times. Finally, Eli figures out, wait a second, he's not hearing me, he's hearing the Lord. And he says, all right, Samuel, go and lay down. And when you hear that voice again, say, Lord, your servant heareth, and then take whatever message that God is going to give you. And this is exactly what happens. And so the message that the Lord gives to Samuel that night is a prophecy that Eli's sons are going to die and then he's going to die in the same day. It's a very evil prophecy in the sense that it's something that obviously the people involved are not going to like. And this is a punishment for something that we actually talked about in a previous episode, a previous chaplain's report, where we were talking about how Eli, despite being faithful to God himself, ultimately put his sons on a pedestal that was higher than God, and that's something that God simply could not tolerate. As his punishment, this is the fate that awaits both him and his sons. So that's really where we start off here. And in the morning, Eli calls him, and that's where this verse comes in, in 1 Samuel 3, verses 16 through 18. Then Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son, and he said, Here I am. And he said, What is the word that he spoke to you? Please do not hide it from me. May God do so to you, and more also if you hide anything from me of all the words that he spoke to you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him and said, It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. There's a couple different ways to look at this story, and I think that each one is, is just as enlightening as the other. First of all, this took a great deal of faith for Samuel. Because that had to be a hard message to deliver. As a prophet, and, and we know this from the biblical record, there are times when a prophet gets to bring really good news. I mean, you see times where a prophecy comes of, of a child being born or some kind of deliverance from God, some kind of victory in battle. There's all kinds of different prophecies that can be of really good report. But it's interesting to me that the very first time God speaks to Samuel, a young child, the news that he's given to give to Eli, it's bad news. It's not just bad news, it's kind of the worst news you can get, that you and your family are going to be wiped off the planet. Like that, especially in Jewish culture, that's about as bad as it gets. That not only will you cease to exist, but your family lineage, which was very important to the Jewish people, that's not going to exist anymore. Your, your sons and your heirs are going to be knocked off of that as well. There's no doubt this was hard for Eli to hear. And it was very hard for Samuel to say to the man who raised him like a father that this was the fate that was awaiting him. I'm sure it was not only hard for Samuel to tell Eli, but also pretty hard for him to hear. To put it in context, what if you heard God tell you in a prophecy that your dad was going to suffer a fate like that? And I know Eli is not his dad, but he's the closest thing that he's had to a father, so far as we can tell. You can even see in that passage where Eli calls him my son. And so Samuel gets really bad news as a very young boy. And he's given the task with being honest with Eli and telling him, and, and that had to be something that was scary for him. He didn't know how Eli was going to react, and you've got to commend Samuel's faith at such a young age to be able to deliver a very difficult message that he didn't want to hear and he didn't want Eli to have to hear either. But ultimately, and granted, a little prodding from Eli probably helped. 
But ultimately, he had faith that God was going to work everything out. Ultimately, he had faith that, yeah, I don't want to bring this thing, and I, I could lie about it, but I'm not. I'm going to tell the truth. I'm going to tell the whole truth. And what God has given me to tell others, I'm not going to abridge it. The truth is going to hurt, but I'm going to bring it anyway. I mean, that's a faith that we're supposed to emulate, isn't it? Sometimes the world's not going to like what we say. In fact, most of the time, the world is not going to like what we say. There's going to be an awful lot of times where what we say actually puts us at odds with the vast majority of the human race. Say it anyway. You don't compromise the truth. You don't water down God's word. You don't give it a, a flowery presentation. You don't mince words. And I'm not saying you can't change your approach every once in a while, but if you ever do that and water down the message or change the message, you've done something that you're not supposed to do. You have usurped God's authority in saying, this is what is true. This is what I want you to tell other people. If you try to put a smiley face on it or sugarcoat it, that's not something that Jesus did. That's not something that God did. And we see right here, even as a little boy, that's not something that Samuel was willing to do either. He told everything exactly the way that God gave it in all of its terrible and horrific detail. But it was still the right thing to do because that's what God told him to say. And we're supposed to do exactly the same thing with the Scripture. But on the other side of this, I know that this is a bad end for Eli. I know that Eli made a really big mistake in putting something ahead of God. But you got to admire Eli's faith, at least in this one matter as well. Because look at how this ends. It is the Lord. Let him do what seems good to him. Basically, what Eli is saying here is if the Lord has determined that this is good, I'm deferring to his judgment. I'm taking it on his authority that this is the right thing to happen. I don't like it. I don't want it to happen. But if that's God's decision, I can live with it. Or, in this case, not live with it. Well, he has to live with it for a little while. Ultimately, he had to have faith that if this is God's judgment, God is always right. may not like the judgment. doesn't matter. If God decided it, I abide by it even if it means my death. Isn't that exactly what Christians are called to do as well? That in times where what he commands us doesn't seem good or convenient or something we like, whether it's something that says, no, I'm, I'm sorry, you can't marry that person. No, I'm sorry, you're not allowed to go out and, and do whatever you want to. You're held accountable to me. You can't use language like that. You can't use this substance. I mean, you can't lie to people. You can't, uh, you know, waffle back and forth on these things. No, I'm sorry. You got to tell people what sin is and what sin isn't. That's, that's part of the calling that I've given you as a Christian. That we have to decide that it's the Lord. Let him do what seems good. It's the Lord. If he says it, he's got a good reason. And so even though this is a pretty horrible end for Eli, and as Bible characters go, Eli has a pretty rough end of his story compared to most of them. But even so, I do appreciate that Eli has the proper perspective when the end does come. Ultimately, it is the Lord should be all the justification that a Christian needs when suffering comes his way. That it comes down to when, whenever there's something in our life we can't explain, there's something that's coming our way that we don't like, we say, it is the Lord. Let him do what seems good. I accept it. Because God wouldn't do this. God wouldn't put me in a situation. God wouldn't allow me to enter into this temptation if I wasn't ready for it. And i got to tell you, that's... That's sometimes a really, really hard attitude to adopt. But ultimately, it hits at the core of God's nature. God is good. God is loving. God cares about us. And if all those things are true, then at the end of the day, we should be able to say it is the Lord. 
So if he has determined it, then it is good. Stay the course, friends. Studies show that YouTube videos featuring attractive women get far more likes and subscriptions than ones that don't. This is especially true if she's exotic looking. Luckily, in the modern era, there's an easy way to work around this. You see, I identify as a very attractive Hispanic woman, so now you have to like this video and subscribe to my channel, otherwise you're just an evil, heartless Nazi that hates brave, liberated, beautiful Latina women like me. Checkmate, woke brigade.